G'day, just a quick review of the Rigold DS1104Z, which is a 4 channel 100 megahertz oscilloscope. Let's take a look. Just a quick look at what you get in the box. Of course, a Rigold DS1104Z with power lead, a USB lead for data connection or uh, automation, and of course, four scope probes included. We also have the, the manual with calibration certificate from Rigol. Taking a look at the front panel, we have the, the, the dominating feature of course is the enormous seven inch display, quite luxurious with buttons down the side. So this, this is a nice feature. This is a feature that I like in modern scopes where because they can get quite complicated and they have often a lot of features, having the extra panel for buttons means that you have a one button to one function uh, display and that means you're not endlessly scrolling through menus. We'll see more of that when I power the scope up. Of course, four channel inputs with the control for a given channel with controlled by these knobs and of course you can select your channel number here and of course the horizontal uh, or time base no, uh, control and the triggering control. This is all very uh, very common a very common layout for most digital storage scopes. We also have our measure and acquisition settings as well as cursor and some print menus and of course the the run single and stop uh, buttons at the top. Of course a folding handle on the top and on the bottom we have some folding feet so you can lift it off the desk if you need to. On the back we have just the, uh, the standard power, IEC power input as well as the communications uh, connection so USB and LAN. And we also have the trigger output which also doubles as the pass fail output for running automated tests. Okay, just off camera, I've turned the scope on. That took the, the usual 15, 20 seconds, pretty common for DSOs. I've also connected it up to a function generator. So we can see there are, there are two functions on the screen at the moment. And maybe just to make things a little clearer, I'll make that, square, that triangle wave a sine wave. So we have two different signals on the screen. I don't have a, a four channel generator, so unfortunately I can't show you all four channels pumping away. But there you have it. So let's take a look at some of the built-in functions for the scope. Straight away, we have some uh, measurement functions, and we can also change which, uh, which axis we're looking at by hitting this menu button. So we can move between, I don't know if you'll be able to read that on camera, but we can move between the vertical measurements and horizontal measurements by selecting this menu button. And then we can scroll up and down using these arrow keys. So if I were to take these waveforms slightly out of phase, or maybe not slightly, maybe I'll go, let's go, how about 90 degrees out of phase. I'll also make the frequencies match. So these are both one kilohertz waveforms with a phase of 90 degrees. There we go. So we should be able to measure that quite uh, quite trivially by scrolling down along the horizontal and selecting phase one to two. So if we press that, we can see down the bottom, it, a small display has come up showing the phase angle as about 90 degrees. Now that is fluctuating a little bit because you know the stability of the function generator just turned on and what have you. So what we can do is bring up the statistic menu, which will give us a little more information. So we can go over to measure and we can bring statistic on. And now we have the current and average, a max and a min reading for any measurement that we choose. And somewhat bad practice, I forgot to just bring these channel multipliers down to one times. Of course, I'm using BNC to BNC probes instead of the, um, the DSO 10 times probe, so I need to rescale my channel. That's okay, that just changes voltage readings on the display. But there you have it, we have our phase uh, measurement coming up down the bottom. I can switch over to the vertical uh, menu and let's let's measure, I guess, how about the, the voltage peak to peak? So I'll select channel one and I'll hit voltage peak to peak. And you might've noticed actually that the color of the text has changed on this menu. So that's, that's quite a nice visual prompt just to show you what channel you're measuring. Before continuing, I thought I'd just zoom in a bit. So we can select that voltage peak to peak measurement and we get another window coming up. And because of course we're in statistic mode, 
we're getting the, uh, the time statistics as well. I could turn that statistic mode off and we'd get just a, a single window or a single reading in that window of just the current voltage. And of course, selecting channel two, just off screen, I selected channel two. I can then measure the peak to peak as well. So you'll notice that these two windows have different colored text and also the channel label, just to make things really nice and clear as to what uh, channel that measurement corresponds to. The DS1104Z is what we would call a deep memory oscilloscope. An oscilloscope's depth of memory affects how much information it can store for a given sample rate. For instance, let's take a single measurement. First of all, I might just change that second channel to just some noise. So we have a sine wave on channel one and noise on channel two. Now, if I take a single snapshot of, the, of these waveforms, the, the deeper the scope's memory, and of course the higher its sample rate, the more I'll be able to zoom in on the waveforms to see and still see information. So we can see I've zoomed in to about 100 nanoseconds and I can still pick up the detail of the noise on channel two. So this is really useful for on say lower frequency waveforms being able to find noise spikes within that waveform, but also the, the depth of memory means that you can store more information at a given sample rate. And that's really important for when you're trying to capture, say, a turn-on characteristic and you want to capture any transients during, say, a power supply's turn-on. So just to illustrate, I captured that waveform at a one millisecond time base and I can zoom all the way down. So we're now at 100 microseconds down to 10 microseconds down to one microsecond and even further down to say 200 microseconds and we can still pick up detail in that noisy waveform. So the depth of the scope's memory has allowed us to capture waveforms all the way out here and zoom into them all the way down here. So let's take a quick dive through the other menus that the Rigol has to offer. We have the cursor menu where of course we can take manual measurements with the cursors. That's um, as we, whoops, as we normally would. So that's just using, moving the cursor bars. So I'll just on this top channel, I can move the cursor bars to select that point. And then if I so wish, I can select the top of that next peak. Just like so, and then using Using those two cursors, we can extract some information about the period and voltage difference between them. And that's shown up on this window here. We can cycle the cursors back to off or even over to auto where it'll attempt to automatically resolve those measurements for you. If we head over to the acquire menu, this is where we set our acquisition settings. So this is where we can change the acquire mode. We can also change the memory depth. So at the moment we're on automatic memory depth, but you can uh, set that to something manually lower so you don't use the full memory depth because it does take a little while to throw all this data around and that can change your acquisition window size. So I mean usually auto is fine for most circumstances and anti-aliasing currently off, but definitely useful to have. We can change the display characteristics and of course, because this is a digital storage oscilloscope, we have the option for storage. So that would be where you have a USB drive plugged into the scope and you can select to save as a picture or as some Rigol proprietary formats like traces and waves. But we can also just dump uh, pure CSV data. So data that you can open up in Excel, MATLAB, Octave and analyze on a computer manually. So there you have it, a quick walkthrough of the Rigol DS1104Z. I'd recommend this scope for really serious makers who know they're definitely gonna need that 100 megahertz or for uh, as a standard piece of bench equipment in a maker space where you know you'll have a lot of varied use cases. It's a really affordable scope for that kind of application. As far as interfacing goes, I'm really happy with it. I really like this extra row of buttons down the left-hand side. So you've got dedicated menu options, turning the knobs, pressing the buttons, everything's very responsive, everything feels very nice and the display updates instantly, so there's no lag whatsoever. So if you own a Rigol DS1104Z and want to share your thoughts, or if you have any further questions, I'd love to hear from you on our forums. I'll catch you next time.